morning and happy Homebrew Wednesday number four. I'm back from the annual general mayhem, which was uh, the Brewdog shareholder meetup in Aberdeen. I've got a few videos I took in the day, I'll, I'll introduce them in a second, but first of all to Homebrew. Um, in the kegs at the moment I've got Dropkick Nate, I've got a Brewdog Punk IPA clone, I've got a Sierra Nevada Pale, um, but I, we've been drinking the Sierra Nevada Pale, but the Punk and Dropkick Nate, have they went into the keg, they were carved up, and I've basically just been conditioning them in the keg for... The Dropkick Nate's had three weeks, and the Punk's had two weeks. And I've just taken the first pour off the kegs, um, I'll go in which one's which. Right, first one, it's Punk IPA. It's cleared out lovely, considering that's the... F mm. I the bubbles on the glass. Considering it was the first pour out of the keg, I just swelled that, so it's just going to settle down. Give it a second. Considering it was the first out of the keg, and obviously it normally draws up all the bits on the first, I'm really happy with that. So, Punk IPA clone, based on the Malt Miller recipe, although he's changed it recently to the Son of Punk, I think it is. I um, can't remember the change. I know Nelson Solving's not included anymore. A different hop is. But I think all the hopping schedules are the same. So this was uh, Son of Punk on the Malt Miller website. And then the other beer... Excuse the big heads on these as well. They're not chilled, so when I poured them through the lines, they fobbed up and I was on the party tap and just knocked it out right. So I've poured them to the top and when they've settled down, the next one, a bit cloudier. It's a lovely colour again. This is Dropkick Nate. Um, I don't know, most of you, I guess most of you are aware who um, Under the Table Brewing are, which is um, Nate and Elder P. And they won the SJ Pour Challenge last year. And this was his recipe used to brew this one. Actually, I'll start with this one first. It's the first one time I have tried it out of the car out of a carbonated keg. Also, I tried a little taste out of the fermenter and stuff just to make sure it wasn't off flavoured. So cheers, thanks Nate. Good health. Oh, and how'd I be? Oh, that is a that is a yummy bit. I've never used the El Dorado hops before, and I think everyone's trying to buy El Dorado at the minute. They seem to be sold out everywhere. That is absolutely. I'll give a proper taste test to this when it's all been um, chilled down properly, but. Oh. Spectacular bit, and going over to my other one. I'm getting proper in review modes. Uh, halfway through my Smash video, Smash reviews for the this year's Smash competition, uh, the the quality of the beers have just absolutely blown me away. It's the first competition I've ever entered, and you know you kind of get the old when you tell people are oh, you homebrew, they expect homebrew. Homebrew twang, homebrew this, homebrew that. And the quality of beers we've all been producing, I tell you, puts a shame to most pubs you go in and you get a pint. Um, so I'm halfway through, I've not had a bad pint yet, they've all tasted absolutely, uh, they've all had their own uniqueness, they've got their own flavours, some people have switched up yeast, some people different malts I've never tried, I've been absolutely blown away, the quality of like every single glass that I've poured so far. I think, I say it really does put a lot of pubs to shame. When you go into a pub and a barrel sat there and it's just not fresh and it's not cared for, I mean you could tell these beers have been properly put together, absolutely fantastic. Anyway, <clears throat> rattling on. Punk IPA clone. Son of Punk IPA clone. It's got the familiar, <coughs> a good bottle of punk aroma to it. 
as you can tell, I drink an awful lot of Punk IPA being a Brewdog shareholder. That is Punk. That is a really good representation of Punk. It's not the first time I've brewed Punk. I did Punk, the original Malt Miller um, recipe. Oh, it's lovely. Actually, these kegs, plus the Sierra Nevada Pale, plus the Galaxy beer that I did last week. In the summer, I'm having a party. I plan on putting all four of them on, on draft, two taps at a time. So, obviously, during the night, I'll swap them over. And that is a, a good introduction beer again. I like Punk is. It's a good sort of craft entry beer. Right. I'm going to enjoy these two. I'm going to put myself over now to myself in Aberdeen. Um, my start of my weekend's journey at the Punk uh, AGM. As promised, the next video, this one, is from windy, sunny Aberdeen. At none other than the Brewdog. Punk AGM. Hold tight. We are in. Right, we are in. This is one of the bars areas. We've got the Rudolf Mobile Bar. We've got the Can Bar. Just sipping on. What are we sipping on in the minute? Huh? Born to Die. A little Born to Die just to get us going. It's only 8.4%. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning. Hi guys, just a little update. We are now just sitting down, a little chill out, a couple of couple of beers, <laughs> couple of beers, just to um, we're just waiting for uh, for James and Martin to come on, give us an update of the business, all the proper, you know, it's an AGM, it's got to be formal. We've got to get all the business stuff out of the way, and then we've got to get on the beers. Well, carry on on the beers. Just having um, my name is Little Ingrid. Very nice. Uh, I've got a. a Pint of punk below my chair just to keep it going. Oh, anyway, as I was saying, got a pint of punk under my chair for if the business talks need a bit of heckling. Um, look, a little, little show of this place here. We've got stand up here. I do have a bottle of Born to Die that arrived today that I ordered from Brewdog. Made a silly mistake. My other half likes IPAs. After tasting in that video when we had the, the Born to Die, most of the bars at the AGM, there were six bars, most of the bars had Born to Die on. And wife had various other beers, but sort of the go-to beer for the day was Born to Die. And I must admit, an amazing beer. So the one mistake I've made I've only one bottle of it. So, anyway. Just thought I'd mention, I might not have much more homebrew in today's video. Probably a little recap at the end. So if you've had enough cut there, it's probably going to be a bit more commercially stuff now. Um, so, at the AGM. Absolutely epic. We had a, a talk from Martin and James. If I can work out how to do it, I'm going to insert a bit of these two on stage here, or at least a photo of the stage. Um, talk about business, talk about um, future plans. I don't know if any of you keep up with the craft, with the Brewdog scene. Um, they've broken ground on a 300 hectolitre brewery next to the existing site in the Ellen. So obviously, sample various beers. Then come the bands. So basically, they clear out the middle part of the conference center, take all the chairs out of the way. We had uh, Twin Atlantic that was pulled apart by horses. There was an amazing ska band, headline of, of Idlewild. There was there was, uh, there was six bands in total. I mean, what a spectacular day. Amazing beers, great bands. I'll put a bit of video in now. I'm not going to put the audio in because I know what... YouTube will do and kick me off. Right, as I said, the next day we made our way up to Ellen um, to visit the brewery. I've been there a couple of times now, so not my first visit. We took the tour. Um, basically, it was good to see around. 
see the improvement since last year, more fermenters, I mean, huge fermenters. Over a quarter of the beer they produce now is just punk. So obviously, keeping up the demand, fermenters are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is before the new brewery comes online. We were given a tour around from the grain mill, through to where the water treatment goes on, to the boilers, and the mash tun, boiler, obviously the fermenters, right through packaging to the brand new canning line. And I've actually got a can here. See the, the date of this, if you can see the date. That says the 5th of June. So quite literally, fresh as you like, a can of Jack Hammer. Uh, the new canning line. It's going to be kicking out 15 cans per second. It'd be rude not to open it, wouldn't it? Picture of it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, a picture of it here. Jackhammer, this fresh. Out of the can. It's like a mini keg. Wow, hold on. Oh, it's like heaven. I'm not going to finish all this now. I'm going to have a bath and relax with that in a minute. That is. Actually, point. They've said the um, brewery in America is going to be pretty much exclusively canning everything. You can put a canning line in in America as well. They will do the occasional bomber bottles, the bigger bottles, for one offs, but all the core range is going to be canned for America, which I think is such a good move. Getting this canning line in house as they can obviously control quality and everything themselves. Yeah, it was great to see around the brewery. I met um, a brewer that I've spoken to on the internet many a times. He was actually brewing the day we were there. They were brewing 5 a.m. Saint, so it was good to have a chat to him about that. Just absolutely phenomenal. Then we went outside, <clears throat> out the front to Dog Tap, had a couple of beers there, and then made our way back. Obviously, flew back late that night. But all in, spectacular weekend i said i wasn't gonna drink for the rest of the month but obviously um we'll ignore that plus i've got to review these smash beers so i'm having a night off for smash beers but so hopefully this part of me i'll get some footage this week coming up of gassy in a can that still tastes absolutely if you can see the, well, they're not they're not in general sale yet. They're not available to the public as such. They are going to be on the Brewdog website first, I believe, in the next couple of days. If you get to see these, God, I've had, I mean, Jack on at draft and in bottles. This is, I know it's fresh. Oh, that is phenomenal. Oh, I should have got more of this. Yeah, this week I'm going to try and get the Galaxy beer that I brewed on the last February Wednesday. Uh, it's dry hopping at the moment. I've just dropped it down to 14 degrees. That was something I picked up from one of the brewers at Brewdog, said suggested, because I was saying how oh, I carry on at 18. So the yeast has done its thing now. I've dropped it to 14. Dry hopping at 14, then I'm going to try and cold crash. Over the weekend I'll get some video of just decanting that into the keg, maybe a quick little taste. Um, got a couple of little projects on the go and I'll include them in a future video. So, thank you very much. Thank you for um, tuning in. I hope it hasn't put any of you off for being too long and too commercially brew doggy. Um, I have another video coming up when I get around to it. Giving some reasons really to there's an awful lot of haters in the craft beer scene, especially some particular forums I'm not going to mention here. And I've got an answer to them in video, so um, that one will be coming up, keep an eye out from the channel. Thank you very much for all your comments, I'm rubbish at replying to them, but that's one thing I'm going to try harder. Thanks for the likes, so many new subscribers through the Smash competition, um, obviously it's getting the channel out there, I think we're up to like 50, 50 subscribers already, which is... Crazy, and I put a video up, and within an hour, there's like six hits, six views already. So, you're all mad for watching me, but thank you, I very much appreciate it. I'll see you on the Smash Beer reviews next. Happy Homebrew Wednesday.